Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated. At the moment, Ledger is having a DAPS League event from the 21st of July to the 2nd of August, where if you participate, you can get 30% off of your Ledger in Nano S. While I am not an employee of Ledger, I am an affiliate, and I do have an affiliate link in the description below for those of you who are interested. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. At the moment, I come bearing good news. The cryptocurrency market is in green. The market looks strong, if you kind of want to put it that way. It says eth Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoin bulls gain strength. Bitcoin and Ethereum witness strong gains as the overall crypto market has spiked by more than 100 billion US dollars. Ethereum recovers sharply, why Ethereum could continue higher above $2,000. And as always, Bitcoin's price will surge to $160,000 by year end, crypto CEO predicts. The crypto price predictions are always going to be there. They're actually quite amazing at the moment. Uh, there are a lot of surveys being done where we are seeing that a lot of the people who are negative on prices tend to be the people who are very new to the market, who really don't understand what's going on, who are just in for the short-term gains, who put $100 into it and who are trying to become millionaires. The other people who have been here for a while expect prices to continue rising and every single time, just about every single day, more or less, uh, we get news from some type of a CEO or an analyst or something like that who expects by the end of this year that Bitcoin's price will easily be above $120,000. I, I did a thing on my Instagram, and I think the average number, like I, I think the lowest number that I saw was someone saying 35,000. I think they were just randomly hitting numbers on their screen. The lowest high number was 85, and a lot of people were saying that they expect between 120, 185,000 dollar Bitcoin. I think at this point, 100K is definitely in the cards. It's just a matter of when we get there. Uh, so moving into why, and I dare even question why it could be why, if that makes any sense. Um, it says Doge price analysis. Dogecoin price rises by 30% as the B word conference unfolds. What's next? For those of you who forgot that this was taking place, this started happening yesterday. The, the, the event called the B word, which is basically the Bitcoin, where a number of high profile celebrities and people came together to talk about the cryptocurrency space and Bitcoin and why Bitcoin is good for the world and why Bitcoin does this and why Bitcoin does that. The main thing that people were watching is the discussion between Elon Musk, Kathy Wood, I think that's her name, and Jack Dorsey that was moderated by a fourth person. I can't remember his name. Sorry, sir. Uh, and basically the discussion. Now, listen, it was not by any means the most... Um, like fireworksy uh, meeting or conference or talk ever. Have you ever seen people play basketball, but the ball's not dribbling and they're kind of like passing it, they like rolling it on the floor of each other? That's kind of what it was like. But people lost their minds basically at everything that Jack Dorsey, uh, that Elon Musk was saying. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Elon Musk reaffirms support for Bitcoin in the B word event. Market sentiments turned bullish. You could see almost in real time as this man was talking that the prices were spiking. Elon Musk says SpaceX has bought Bitcoin, personally owns Ethereum and Dogecoin. He mentioned that he was like, I like Bitcoin a lot and I also actually own Ethereum and Dogecoin. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he also owns Ethereum. Did you think... I'm constantly surprised at people being surprised about things in the space. It's Elon Musk. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty. I, I, I would even go so far as to say he probably, maybe even owns some other coins. But these are probably his largest holdings. He mentioned before, yesterday, that Bitcoin is his largest holding, and he also holds some Ethereum and Dogecoin as well. So no exact numbers on those. The other news being, he announced openly. I believe he said it three times as well during the course of the interview uh, that he owns Bitcoin, Tesla owns Bitcoin, and SpaceX also owns Bitcoin. No exact word on the amount of Bitcoin that they own, but everyone was like, oh my gosh, can't believe it. Elon Musk also reconfirmed that Tesla will reaccept Bitcoin when the conditions are met. One of the main discussions that they were trying to have, and it was actually really funny because you could tell 
that Jack Dorsey was trying not to, like, let loose or be rude during the event because Elon Musk kept on saying that he believes that Bitcoin needs to go quicker and Bitcoin needs to have more capacity and Bitcoin needs to be so-and-so. And um, Jack Dorsey was basically trying to tell him, like, yes, we are working on that. This is why we have Lightning. This is why we have so-and-so. And then Musk would kind of chime in and say, well, we also have Dogecoin. He was kind of doing, like, it, it felt like he was, like, on SNL again trying to make jokes but no one in the room was laughing and and I don't mean that as like in a mean way like if you watch the interview for yourself he was saying stuff and like Kathy Woods was like looking away in the corner and I think Jack Dorsey was like clipping his his fingernails or something like that it was it was just very weird and then whenever Elon Musk would stop talking someone else would kind of take the helm but he reannounced once again uh that as he said before in the past if Bitcoin has more than 50% of the renewable energy goal, which he said is the only reason why Tesla would reaccept Bitcoin again, then he would reaccept it. And they were basically saying, hey, we've done the work, we've looked at the numbers, and it's 56% already of the energy is green. <coughs> and there was some type of a statement along the lines of, well, we'll see when we get to that point kind of thing. I, I'm I'm certain they already have plans to reaccept it. He probably just wasn't able to say a date or anything like that. Um, and what's this one say? Uh, Elon Musk says, yeah, here we go. Uh, this was news that's everywhere news, if you hadn't noticed. I mean, it was the most popular thing in the entire world. Everyone was hanging on to every single... I, and and I, I, I don't understand... I get why Elon Musk is popular, but I don't understand why people hang on to his every word. That makes it very dangerous for our market because what if he wakes up and what if he has a bad week he starts negatively tweeting about bitcoin and then the price goes down like our market is tr bitcoin is trying to take over the u.s dollar take over as a world reserve currency that other currencies can be based on and or be used itself as a currency do we that's like imagine remember the other day when Steve Bannon I think it was came out and he was like I don't like Bitcoin. Imagine if everything Steve Bannon said affected our market. What if he had really good breakfast one day and he's like oh, those pancakes were delicious and then our, our prices went up. It shouldn't rest on the whim of Elon Musk and his words and his tweets. But alas here we are. So uh, the Ethereum sentiment also appears to be because the Ethereum conference in Paris is currently taking place right now. And a new upgrades and yada, yada, yada. And we're also two weeks away from Ethereum uh, burning their coin. So, yeah, that's the major news of the day is that um, Tesla and SpaceX own Bitcoin. Elon Musk owns Ethereum. Uh, they're going to reaccept Bitcoin, I assume, soon. And money. I think that's the last thing to be had. Anyway, that's all the Elon Musk news. And let's move on. Is this also it? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Here we go. This is what the event looked like. Here's what everyone missed in the Dorsey, Musk, and Wood Bitcoin talk. You didn't miss a thing. I just told you everything. You didn't miss a gosh darn thing. It was the weirdest. Like, they were they were all sitting there so bored as the other people were talking. And it was mainly Dorsey and uh, Elon Musk talking for like 85% of the time. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on. Next up, most of JP Morgan's clients see Bitcoin as an asset class and are demanding crypto services, according to the company's senior executive, Mary Callahan Erdoz. While being skeptical about offering Bitcoin investment options to its clients, the American multinational investment bank, JP Morgan Chase & Co., has admitted that demand for the asset class has increased significantly. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, Mary Callahan Erdoz, JP Morgan's director of asset and wealth management noted that most of the company's clients views on Bitcoin or view Bitcoin as an asset class to maintain its client base. Erdo stated that the, the, the giant <laughs> that the bada bada, that the giant bank will continue to provide cryptocurrency services to its customers to meet up with the growing demand. So the news is that JP Morgan First of all, we all know that JP Morgan's into Bitcoin. We all know that JP Morgan probably owns Bitcoin in some sort of subsidiary other way shell company. It's definitely owning Bitcoin. These, these people are not idiots. You don't have hundreds of your clients saying, hey, we need to own Bitcoin in some sort of way. You go, we don't want to own any of it. You're also betting on it on the backside of it 
as well. So that's the JP Morgan news. And then tying directly into that, a survey conducted by major investment bank Goldman Sachs, another bank, has found that close to half of its family office clients want to add cryptocurrency to their portfolios Signaling the ultra wealthy are becoming increasingly bullish on digital assets in order to now here's the normal numbers in order to have like a family office or like a family wealth office. Basically, the idea is that you have your money, they tell you where to allocate it or they basically allocate it for you so that the next five or six generations of your offspring have money. It's, it's usually the ultra wealthy who have these things and you normally need to have around 300 million to be considered in this way to be able to have a a family wealth office so that's just to put it into context of how rich these people actually are the survey reported by bloomberg queried more than 150 family offices worth more than usually 200 to 300 million dollars worldwide and found that 15 percent are already exposed to crypto assets a further 45% of family offices expressed interest in investing in the asset class as a hedge against higher inflation prolonged low rates and other macroeconomic developments following a year of unprecedented global monetary and fiscal stimulus. However, other respondents cited concerns regarding the volatility and long-term uncertainty surrounding the price of cryptocurrencies as reasoning for their aversion to the asset class. Approximately 67% of the firm surveyed managed more than $1 billion worth of assets, with 22% of the respondents boasting assets under management exceeding 5 billion US dollars so they are ultra wealthy the news basically being in a nutshell uh rich people are in the market and want exposure to the market and are buying it from the largest banks or in it in some sort of way blah, 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 blah. it said in one of the articles around here I'm not sure exactly blah, 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 blah. don't know exactly where it is it's either this one or this one somewhere around there uh it, it basically noted remember like a, a month or two ago maybe even more, there was some really rich person who was like, I, I see absolutely no interest uh, from institutional investors in the cryptocurrency space. And I was like, no, it's clear that he's lying. All these people are into Bitcoin, every single one of them. Just to this is just to kind of let you know that uh, if, if, if anyone ever tells you, here's the actual Bloomberg article right here from Bloomberg Wealth. If anyone ever tells you these people aren't in the Bitcoin, they are lying to you. They are mega lying to you. They're all into Bitcoin. They're trying to figure out how to buy as much as humanly possible and basically try and get control of the space in any way that they can because they want money. Anyway, that's the rich people are definitely in the market news. And yeah, let's move on. Next up, in a blog post, stablecoin issuer Circle revealed that various sources of backing the, that underpinned its stablecoin USDC. This is not going to be the most exciting news on the planet, but alas, here we are. Stablecoins are pegged to the price of a fiat currency. In this case, the US dollar, using matching currency denominated assets that are held in segregated accounts by the issuer. The total value of assets held in those accounts must be equal to or greater than the number of stablecoins in circulation. For those of you who were not here a couple of years ago, when Tether first appeared... The idea of a stablecoin was very new. A lot of people within the cryptocurrency space believe that we do not need them. I still think I'm kind of part of that crowd that we don't need them unless you are trading. If you are a day trader, then it is very convenient for you to be able to have. But the entire idea of the cryptocurrency space, it's kind of not completely necessary. Alas, here we are. Part of the discussion right now is, as regulators continue to step into the space, is how real are these stablecoins, i.e., uh, over the course of a week period, there may be 300 million new Tether that are issued on its blockchain. The issue being, does Tether actually have $300 million that were given to them so that they could hit the button to be able to make 300 million new Tether? This discussion is now being asked of every single major stablecoin, but I also believe that behind the scenes, there's something being done to be able to kind of get Tether to move out of the way. Tether being the most popular stablecoin, it was also never really bet on by industry players in that. Uh, the same exact way that I said before and we've seen before, uh, there are a lot of people who greatly believe in Bitcoin. 
These are people who got into Bitcoin in 2011. They did not buy any Ethereum, and therefore, why would they support Ethereum if they have so much Bitcoin? There are tons of people who got into the cryptocurrency space in 2015, 2016, who have millions, potentially millions and millions and millions of Ethereum, did not buy any Bitcoin because Bitcoin was too expensive for them at the time, and therefore, they are an Ethereum bull, if you kind of want to say that. Same exact way with stablecoins. No one really backed Tether in the beginning, except for the very first people who were like, hey, there's money to be made here. Afterwards, when other people realized that there were hundreds of millions of Tether and it was like a really good way for people to be able to not have to cash back into fiat, but to simply cash back into a stablecoin to have a stable value if the market was falling. That's when Coinbase came out and said, hey, we also have our own stablecoin. You should be using ours. And then Jim and I did the exact same thing. And now there seems to be a bit of a, a tug of war. Can you have a three-way tug of war? I don't even know. Between Tether, uh, the Coinbase dollar, and the Gemini dollar, uh, the Gemini and Coinbase dollar basically being the two largest companies within the space, within the United States, who have bent the knee to regulators. Weird way of saying it, but you understand exactly what I'm saying. They basically have held out their hand and said, please regulate me at will as much as you possibly want. The issue being, once again, is that Tether has not bent over backwards, the same as Binance, for regulators. And in this way, this is why we're now seeing so much stablecoin news. I'm pretty sure you've seen it over the last couple of days. Uh, regulators are also like, hey, we have to regulate these stablecoins. It's not because they actually care about consumers or, or, or care about you. They want to know where these coins are coming from, who's holding them, and the movement of these coins so that it does not affect the U.S. dollar. That's always the point of it. It's always just monetary control. That's, that's how the world basically works. So there's now news about Circle. I think we have definitive news about Gemini and their, and their U.S. dollar and exactly how much because the Gemini twins are, you know, they are smooth and squeaky clean. They don't want any type of problems. Uh, but there's now news that came out. I don't have it up here, but if you want me to find it, I'll find it for you. It's not. No, it's not that amazing. Uh, the people from Tether have announced <clears throat> that they're going to do another audit of their holdings. Uh, the idea being, once again, just to finish off this topic, a lot of people think or believe that when a stable coin is issued, that it is completely backed by one US dollar per stable coin. But that's not how the real world actually works. It even says it's somewhere around here. Uh, Circle has uh, 220, wow, $22 billion, okay, in its account at the time of the report. Uh, more than 60% of the $22 billion or $13.4 billion is held in cash. A quarter of the reserves are split between Yankee Certificate of Deposits, a type of savings vehicle denominated in dollars, which accounts for $2.9 billion, and U.S. Treasury Securities, which account for $2.7 billion as well. The remaining 14% is split between commercial paper and corporate bonds. <clears throat> Funny, because I know that no one will have an issue with this. The problem that people had with Tether is that two years ago when they had an audit, I, I think their uh, total supply of Tether was backed by, I think, 60% of fiat currencies. I think a lot of it was based in like uh, security real estate and other bonds and stuff like that as well. And people were like, you're lying. You don't hold the dollars. And it's like, no, no one holds exact dollars in case you got to hedge yourself. So the point is to finish off this topic, that's the stablecoin news. We're going to keep hearing about this. I I I'll try not to, you know, burden you every day with stablecoin news. But as Facebook's coin gets closer, it should have launched, I think, in summertime. Who knows when it's actually going to happen? This scrutiny of stablecoins will continue simply because regulators uh, realize that no one really has to use the U.S. dollar anymore. And we can simply use Circle or the Gemini dollar or Tether or any other coin because, you know, we're in the future and we don't have to use the old system anymore. Anyway, that's the stablecoin news. <laughs> I, had, I, I had to explain it because a lot of times I, I say things. And I know that I get it, or rather I can formulate in my head why it makes sense. So I try to explain to people, because a lot of times in the comment section, people will ask a question, and then people will call them a bad name for not understanding. And I'm like, no, don't. Stop stop being mean to each other, please. If you know. I was going to say, if you can, just stop doing it. Just don't scream at each other. We're all in this market together. We're all trying to make money. We're all trying to become wealthy so that we never, ever have to have to ever even think of working again. Uh, so just be kind to everyone. Not everyone is maybe as intelligent as you are. Maybe not everyone understands every single thing that you understand. So if someone doesn't understand something and I didn't cover it in a video, just help them out. Give them a little 
send them a link. Give them a little push, you know, help, help them in the right direction. Don't call them and their family names because, <sighs> yeah. All righty. And to finish things off, Flare Network has revealed it is set to airdrop another token to XRP token holders who participated in the Spark Flare airdrop snapshot in December of last year. The new airdrop comes as Flare plans to launch an experimental network as well. According to the new announcement, Flare Networks will also airdrop the native token of a canary network called Songbird. The team behind the project has detailed Songbird's native token SGB, which will be distributed in the next six weeks. The post describes Songbird as critical to test the Flare Network's architecture and core systems, which include a time series oracle and F asset system. Oh, okay, sure, why not? The project CEO and founder Hugo Filion, that sounds fancy, detailed that Songbird will be an oper operational blockchain and adversarial environment for live testing. All right, sure. The point is, um, if you participated last year in the, if you held XRP last year and participated in the Flare airdrop, you are also going to soon be receiving some Songbird. Uh, no exact word as to when. I think it says how much you should be receiving. Uh, for every one XRP at the time of the snapshot, holders will receive 0.15. Um, Songbird tokens. These tokens will have a 15 billion supply, starting supply, and initial inflation of 10% a year through the FTSO and validator reward system. I assume it starts at 10% and then slowly lowers because this is how you gain momentum in the cryptocurrency space. You make something with a relatively high inflation number and then you go, uh oh, it's 5%, uh oh, it's 2%, uh oh, it's 1%, uh oh, it's zero. We're the same as Bitcoin. Uh, so, uh, we haven't had many airdrops. Airdrops were a really big thing in like 2017, 2018. There were a lot. Ooh, that's why the SEC jumped in because so many people were making like big bucks. I'll say it that way from airdrops. Uh, like if you held this coin and this coin forked, you got, you know, you know, the equal amount of that coin. And then there was an airdrop. If you held that coin, there were people making like $15,000 a week from airdrops and fascinating time to live in. Anyway. That's the XRP Songbird airdrop news. A lot of people are very excited because a lot of people decided to participate in the Flare airdrop last December. And now you're going to make even more free money. I guess that's the that's the overall goal in the cryptocurrency space is just to keep making money uh, from holding tokens. Yeah. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Staked with Valor, Fud Weiser, Mortified, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealers Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wishniki, The Letter M, Stefan, Dirks, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Crypto Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos Was Like, Mobarazi, Jojo Shasho, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren DeSilva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pattern Noster, Conan Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Ebibiophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Mohan Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cole D, 3D, Damien, Set Sooner, Richie Rich III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavodi, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for all of your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to all the people who have uh, been purchasing NFTs and supporting my artwork. I do thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who left a like, who left a comment, who left a subscribe. Actually, do me a favor. If you're still here watching the video, uh, leave a comment of the number one, like as many times as you want. So it can be like one, 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 because I see some people commenting sometimes, uh, on the names as I'm reading them or like they'll make a joke about them, but I want to know exactly how many people are still here, like watching at this point. I, I think only like the, the true people who like really are fans are, are still here. So thank you to all of you as well at the moment. 
Bitcoin is at $32,189. It is up by 4.7%. Ethereum is back over 2,000. It is up by 7.5%. Binance Coin is up by 6%. Cardano is up by 5 XRP is up by 7% as well. Dogecoin was up by like 30%. Legitimately 30% as Elon Musk was just breathing in a room. Uh, it is currently up by 9.8%. Polkadot is up by 7 Uniswap is up by 7 Anything like spectacular. Lumens is up by 16 points. <clears throat> Not really sure why. There was no Lumens news. Maybe something is brewing behind the scenes. Matic is up by 18%. Jeez Louise, Theta is up by 11. VeChain Thor is up by 10. Ave is up by 11. <clears throat> OKB is up by 18. Luna Terra is up by 14% as well. <clears throat> Not sure why it's acting up, but at least it's happening at the end of the video. That would have been terrible at the beginning of the video. Anything else crazy? Nope. The market's in green. That's all we can ask for. Let's see what happens as the day ends up going on. I'm, I'm going to try and pay attention to the actual the um, Ethereum event happening in Paris as well. Maybe there's some like really cool announcements that are being made or new upgrades that we're going to find out about. Anyway, I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly... Be talking to you all soon. See you.